Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Steelers Nation Unite Huddle. I am your host, Missy Matthews. Very pleased to be joined today by Joe Hayden, fresh off the practice field, day two in pads. Joe, thanks for joining us. I know the fans are super excited to ask you some questions. Oh, no, I'm happy to be here. All right, so if you would like to ask Joe a question, please press star three. We have a ton of them coming in. Joe, the first question is going to be from another Joe who is in Illinois. Joe, you are now live. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Hi, Joe Hayden. Um, Who's the hardest person to guard throughout your whole career, even when you're on the Browns? Oh, man, good question, Joe. Uh, my, My hardest person, I would say, uh, to guard, honestly, was when I was on the Browns covering Antonio Brown. I had to play him twice a year, every year for seven years, and he gave me headaches uh, every time. All right, Joe, the next question is from Thomas, who is in Austin, Texas. Thomas, you are now live. Please go ahead and ask your question. What's going on, Joe? Thomas from Austin. Uh, I just want to see how you feel about you and Nelson this year. I mean, last year y'all had it on lock. Um, do you think the defense is going to bring that same energy? And uh, do you think it's going to be even better with the addition y'all have this year? Man, good question, bro. I think that uh, I think our defense is going to be sick this year. Um, I felt very, very comfortable, you know, just getting into my groove um, with the Steelers and our, our pass rush helps out our, our, our coverage so much. And then Steve this year, I just don't think he got the recognition he deserved, maybe because he didn't have the interception numbers but nobody was really catching the ball on him. I think it's going to be a breakout year for him so he can be, like, nationally. Everybody's going to recognize Steve as one of the best corners in the league. And then, you know, I'm going to continue to try to do my thing. All right. We are getting tons of questions online and through the Steelers app as well. Again, if you were on the call and would like to ask Joe a question, please press star three. Joe, I'm going to read you one of the online submissions. It is from Derek. He wants to know how many interceptions are you expecting to get this season? I'm expecting to get it's, it's, I'm expecting to get eight. Uh, I had five last year, and I easily could have had nine. I think I dropped four picks. Embarrassing. But um, my, my goal this year is for sure to have a re, a, at least eight picks. All right. We like to hear it. Okay. We are going to go live now to – who did I just click here? Okay, Vincent from Butler, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Joe your question. Hey, Joe, great to be on the line with you. Love having you in Pittsburgh. We know you spent some time over in Cleveland. Just interested to hear your perspective on the difference in culture, especially amongst fans, Pittsburgh and Cleveland, uh, and obviously who's the better choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say the, the one thing about them is the, the fan bases love their teams. That's one thing I could say. The, the Steelers nation is, is just unbelievable, the support we get here. And the same thing when I was in Cleveland, just the, the fan love is, is unbelievable. Um, I would say the one thing that the biggest difference for me is honestly just organizational-wise. Uh, the owners, just the Roonies, we've had, they've been here for so many years. Uh, they don't really like to switch coaches. Um, they've had four head coaches in the last 50 years, something like that. Uh, it's just very, very stable here. Um, and I think that's just one of the biggest things. I think that the the whole from the from the owner to the GM to the head coach, they're kind of on the same page, and they kind of they kind of get it. All right, our next question is international. Our friend Gordon is on the line. Gordon, you're live. Go ahead and ask Joe your question. Good evening, Missy and Mr. Hayden. How does your 2018 interception against the Patriots rate? And your 27 professional interceptions. I would say it is my it's my favorite interception. It's it's my number one, honestly. Um, it's just the just the the keeping us trying to keep us in the playoffs. It was the fourth quarter. It was versus Tom Brady. It was a night game in the Heinz. Kind of everything aligned up for that to be kind of one of my um, one of my best picks. And then I just was able to show some athletic ability, high point at the ball, and then was able to get two feet in. So just all for, for a couple of reasons, that's, that's my number one pick of my career. All right, Joe, we are going to go to Nick, who is in Idaho. Nick, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Joe your question. Hi, thanks, Missy. Hi, Joe. Uh, thanks for doing this today. You've always struck no me as, like, one of the most 
intellectual, smartest players on the team from post-game interviews, the way you talk. I'm curious what you feel is the most cerebral play made by the secondary last year or just in general with the addition of Minka, what you guys really felt like propelled you forward? What was the what was the smart things that happened last year for you guys? I would think, man, honestly, it's just that we started really, really trusting each other. And uh, I think the biggest play for me last year was that pick I had versus uh, Arizona, the diving one when he ran out route um, and I just dove and picked it. That one because – we knew we were in cover two. Um, I had a guy running up the seam, and it was like I told Mink, I'm like, Mink, look, if he runs out about, I'm jumping it. So he might, the the, the seam route up the middle, of, I mean, down the sideline might be open the whole shot. And just knowing that if I go take this, if I go take this play, Mink is going to hold down the other one. Just us having that communication and uh, knowing that we had each other's backs. So that's why it makes it a lot easier to go make plays when you know somebody's covering you. Okay, Joe, I want to read you another online question. This one is from Jared. He wants to know, what has been the most challenging part of this preseason during COVID-19? Hmm. During this preseason, during COVID-19. Um, I mean, I think training camp, I think that the, the way that the Steelers have set it up, you know, I think that we have kind of – it's a, we have everything accessible to us. Um, the stadium is huge, so meeting rooms and everything, we have space. We're able to do the social distancing thing. Uh, I would just say the main thing was during the off season, so we didn't have OTAs or anything like that, and the gyms and stuff being closed down, so people not being able to get that real off season football work in that you get in before you come. So I think just getting people back up to speed. We're starting camp, but it's really – OTAs for the first week. It was just really lifting and running. So uh, I think just people not being able to do their off-season routines and getting into the grind of getting cleats on, doing certain lifts, working out in certain places. So I think that switch up of uh, not having a normal off-season was, was probably the biggest thing. Okay, Joe, next question is coming from Perry in North Carolina. Perry, you are now live. Go ahead and ask your question, please. What's up, Joe, man? Real excited to see the team this year. Uh, I just got a question for you. What's your top three songs on your playlist to get you in the zone on game day? Oh, man. Um, my wife, when, when, when we go for Nice For What, and then basically anything, Gunna and uh, Lil Baby. Those those dudes, they're, they're, just, they're, they're on repeat on, on my iPad. Okay, our next question is Michael in Virginia Beach. Michael, you are live. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Yo, what's up, brother? Um, just want to know who influenced you the most? Who would you follow as cornerbacks? I follow, man, Deion Sanders, um, Champ Bailey, Charles Woodson, um, Deion Champ, Charles, and then the guy that nobody would really think of is uh, Brent Grimes. He's actually one of my one of my favorite corners too. So those those dudes and, and Brevis. So those dudes were the main guys I followed. All right, we have time for just a few more questions, and we have to let Joe go. Our next one is from PJ. You are now live, PJ. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Hey Joe, big fan, man. I just want to know what it's like when you play away game. And it's pretty much like a home game, per se, Chargers last year. What makes Steelers fans that much bigger over any NFL team? Well, I think uh, it, it's it's a history. You know, it's a, a tradition of winning. Um, I've known about, you know, just growing up, you always steal curtain, um, just championships. Um, and then they just have a great, great fan base. And um, the organization has just ran very, very well. It's a very prideful organization. They're all about winning. Uh, they treat people the right way. Um, even just, you know, from the owners, like you said, the Rooney rule started with the Rooney. So, you know, you just got really, really good people um, in the organization. And then they, the evaluators of talent are great. So it's just a, everything, everything works together here. And um, I'm just very excited to be here. All right. Our next question is from Shannon. You are now live, Shannon. Go ahead and ask Joe your question. Hi, Joe. Uh, we were wondering how it is to have Ben Roethlisberger back. 
Man, it, it's honestly amazing. You know, Ben and Coach T were the first, were mainly the primary reasons why I ended up coming to the Steelers when I was a free agent. I just knew that Ben was a baller. I played against him for years. And then meeting Coach T in the um, process of the draft process, just loved him. Um, and uh, those dudes are just really, really good dudes. And then Ben, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback that can throw the ball, put it in any spot. And uh, he just doesn't he, – he just makes us better um, in practice as a secondary. I feel like we have a really good secondary, so when we're competing with him, just making it on tight windows and then uh, just having him to, to practice against. If you can pick off Ben, then I'm like, man, we could pick off anybody. All right, we're going to end on this one, Joe. John from New York, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Joe your question, please. Hey, Joe, so glad you're a Steeler. I watched you for so many years, and you fit us perfectly. Um, my question for you, you sent out a tweet uh, yesterday that uh, he's going to be a problem you hear first. What do you like about Claypool and how do you think he's going to make our offense better this year? Um, man, I think that I, I like Claypool because he's six four and a half, two something, two thirty something, runs a four three. You can't teach that. And then he just works hard. I mean, he's trying to – when we put the pads on, I think he got he got bigger and he looks like he got like – that's what he was waiting for. He's very, very physical in the blocking game. And then, I mean, he's been going deep on us, like catching posts, adjusting to the ball very well for fades. So he's not – he just he just seems very, very comfortable. And then when you got – like I said, when we got seven back there throwing it, all you got to do is run a good route and the ball is going to be on time. So uh, I think that he's going to be a very big, uh, a big asset to the team, and I think he's just going to be able to take the top off. All right, Joe, well, we thank you so much for your time. We know you're really busy with training camp underway here at Heinz Field. So thanks so much, and thanks to all of our fans for joining us. We hope you all have a great day. That's going to do it for our Steelers Nation Unite huddle. We will talk to you all soon.